Okay, let's 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 go into um, identity. This is very important because in uh, in Sanskrit, the word uh, amkara is very interesting. The ego or egoism. Um, and so the idea is that do you identify with the ego? Do you identify with the the limited finite self in this body and nothing else? Or do you identify yourself as universal, as transcendent? And there's a huge difference between those. And also, uh, we can call something like an awakening, awakenings or enlightenment or this, this, the process, whether it be gradually or, or suddenly, to feeling universal or, and transcendent, uh, the process that uh, we all are aiming to pierce that veil. And science does, I would like to hear your take on this. Science does a very interesting job at revealing the unity and the interconnectedness. And I, and I would love to see more spiritualists embody some of these scientific understandings of unity, because I think that would help with the synthesis, but also scientists themselves, like in 1945, if they were more spiritually awake, they wouldn't have dropped bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. So there's that other side as well. Scientists can also gain a decent amount of spiritual knowledge. The general idea is this, you cannot, and science has proven this, you cannot, you take 20,000 breaths of air every single day. You can't live without oxygen, but you can't take one of those 20,000 breaths without summoning the photosynthesis that is happening from phytoplankton and trees around the planet. So you are deeply interconnected with the oxygen cycle of the planet with photosynthesis. And so a question is something to ask oneself is, do I, wh where, where do I draw a line or like a, a, a boundary. When when do I say that I am not the phytoplankton in the trees that provide me with oxygen? All of these, the approximation is 25 sextillion, which is 10 with 21 zeros after it, oxygen molecules that I am inhaling every breath, every breath. And then those are oxygenating my body. Where do I draw the line? I have I have a thousand, we we all each have a thousand species of bacteria in our gut microbiome. So do you affiliate yourself with the 1000 species of gut bacteria and how they have 2 million total genes versus you have 20,000 genes? So a hundred times more genetic expression happening from those, from those gut microbiome. Another example is when do you, when do you take, if you take the apple or the banana and when you, when do you become, when does the apple or banana become you? When you, when you bite it and you begin chewing it, when it actually becomes digested and you go through the process of cellular respiration and the adenosine triphosphate powers you and energizes you. So this is, these are the things that science literally proves interconnectedness and unity. And I'm curious, what do you think about the scientific angle and how it can help the spiritual angle of non-duality flourish? So, Alan, you, you, you've just um, demonstrated uh, from a, a physical point of view the, that, that we as individual people or, or we as a, as, a, as a body are intimately connected with the universe. In fact, not even, not, not, not even intimately connected. We, we are not even apart from the universe as a independently existing entity either to be connected with it or or not connected with it that there is no clear distinction even from a physical point of view which is the point of view you've just demonstrated and, and which as you say uh, quite rightly science m makes very clear it, it is an arbitrary line but the the non-dual understanding goes much further than this it, it doesn't presume to begin with, that what we essentially are is a body, whether or not we are intimately connected to the universe. The non-dual understanding 
first and the non-dual approach makes this deep investigation into what we essentially are. M most of us, most people believe and feel that what they essentially are is, is a body uh, which has generated consciousness inside it, in, in particular inside the brain, and, and that the body as such, uh, sorry, that consciousness as such is uh, born or, or appears when the body appears, that it evolves as the body evolves and that it dies or disappear, disappears when the, when the body disappears. In other words, the, the consciousness shares the limits and the destiny of the body. This is the standard approach in, um, in our culture. And even from this approach, what you have just demonstrated, the interconnectedness of, of us, this apparent body, this body, it, it, um, it is absolutely true. The non-dual approach, as I said, goes much deeper. It, it first of all investigates what we essentially are. And it, it, it tra in this investigation, we trace back our experience of ourselves discarding everything that is not essential to us. Uh, our thoughts are obviously not essential to us. They are always appearing and disappearing. Our feelings, likewise, sensations, perceptions, activities, relationships. These are all um, elements of experience that are added to us. They remain for a while and then they leave us. But what, what is the us? What is the essential irreducible element of ourself? And if we, if we undergo this experiment, and it's a very simple experiment, anybody can do it, we end up with just our simple being, our simple self-aware being. It's like, it's like undressing yeah. at night. When we, when we go to bed at night, we, we take off all the layers of clothes. Each layer is, of course, superfluous to us. The clothes are changing all the time. And we get to our naked bodies, that, that, that element of ourself, relatively speaking, that cannot be removed. That is our naked being. Well, if we do the same thing, relative to our experience and we take off so to speak our thoughts feelings memories uh, sensations perceptions activities and relationships we end up with pure awareness and th this is a pure self-aware being so this is the first great discovery and that's it, what we share is that yeah, well I, I was just okay. going to say that the, the first step is the discovery i, I am awareness this is not yet what is referred to as enlightenment or awakening in the traditions. Then the next step is to investigate the nature of okay, the Okay, so to review, so we took off all of the layers of identity and then we got to the most primal, the yes. most first principled, which was the awareness. Yes, we took off everything that we were identified with, everything that we thought was essential to us, thoughts, feelings, etc. And we got back to our, our naked identity, our original, our, our original face, as they say in the, the, uh, the Zen tradition. Uh, the, uh, the, the essential nature of the mind, as they say in, in Buddhism, the self, as they say in the, in the Hindu tradition. Uh, so that's the first discovery. I, uh, what I essentially am is simply the fact of being aware or awareness itself. The next discovery is, is to discover the nature of the awareness that I am, to, to, to the discovery that it is ever present, uh, that it has no limits, and that its nature is, it is inherently peaceful and unconditionally fulfilled. And that this is the recognition that is traditionally referred to as enlightenment. So I would say this was the, the second recognition. Uh, uh, happiness is my nature. Yes. The third great recognition that meditation is not something that we do. It's what we are. We are the happiness, the bliss, the yes, infinity. The, yeah. Yes. The essential nature of the awareness that I am is peace or happiness. Yes. Okay. And then the third, we can come back. We, 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 I'm, I'm just, yes, yes. The, the, third, the third great recognition, which you uh, um, hinted at, the, the, the recognition that the being that we essentially are is shared by not only everyone, but everything. In other words, everyone and everything 
derive their apparently independent existence from a single, infinite and indivisible reality or, or whole whose nature is, well, ultimately it is unnameable because all names have evolved to uh, describe the content of experience. But if we are going to speak about these matters, let's give it a provisional name. In, in these circles, we tend to speak of it as consciousness or awareness. In religious circles, it is referred to as God's presence or Brahman. Or, but in common parlance, it is referred to as I, myself, my being, the, 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 the one infinite and indivisible reality, which doesn't connect us all, because in the ultimate analysis, there is no all, there, there is not a, a multiplicity and diversity of objects and selves, each with their own independent existence, to be connected. In the ultimate analysis, there are no independently existing objects or self. There is simply a single, infinite, indivisible whole, which is refracted through the prism of the finite mind and appears as many things and many people. So as a concession to the belief that there are many things and many people, we can say that we all share our reality, but in the if we really want to be, try to be more accurate, in the ultimate reality, that there is no we, there are no uh, separate objects or selves, either to be united or not to be united. There is simply the unity of being that appears yeah. Yeah. as this multiplicity and diversity. And, and the recognition, we are, we are speaking of this in, in intellectual terms and analyzing it with the use of our rational mind. But the recognition that we share our being is a familiar recognition that millions of people, I, I would suggest that everybody ha yeah. has some taste of, and that is the experience of love. Love is the recognition that we share our being. Yeah. 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 There's s several things there. There is the, you mentioned the, uh, the Tao that can be named is not the eternal Tao. Um, there's also a Wahat al Wujud, which is that uh, the unity of all being, the unity of all existence. Um, so this is, it's also interesting. It's such a perennial wisdom. It's literally across. Yes. All of these ancient spiritual traditions across of, the planet. Of course it is, because it's what's true, because it's what re what's real. That anyone, at any time, I irrespective of their location on the earth, the, the time in which they have been built, anyone that goes to the nature of reality, by definition, goes to the same reality, because reality is always the same thing, which is not a thing. So, of course, all these diverse expressions of truth or reality are going to point to the, in their own unique, unique ways, ways yeah. are going to point ultimately to the same reality because reality is always real. It is always the same. It doesn't, reality is not one thing in India and another thing in America. It's not one thing in, in um, 2000 years ago and another thing today. Reality is, and in 2000 years time, reality will be exactly what it is now. Although if, if human beings still exist, then they will express it in very, very different ways. The language we're speaking will seem so archaic to them. <laughs> and, it, and we cannot imagine what that language will be. Yeah. Yeah, and we, t in, in the way that science also aims to approach this and validate this is through this unbroken chain of evolution f to that source point and even the way of perceiving it that way and all of these other ways in terms of trying to pierce the veil of where is this boundary and at least the slow process of getting beyond the veil of the ego to the universal, to the transcendent, to the unity of all existence is there's so many of these different ways up this mountain to that nature of reality. But like you say, at that pinnacle point, at that nature of reality, the ultimate point is that infinite consciousness. And I, I think this is a very interesting way to put it is there is this ultimate point. So this kind of leads me into the next point.